Welcome to the Panasonic Newsroom, where I'm joined by a man who's the proud owner of one of Europe's biggest infinity coves. Rupert Cobb uh, runs and owns Gun, Gun Hill Studios, yep. where numerous music videos and advertising projects are filmed predominantly on the Panasonic Evo 1. So, Rupert, um, you, what, tell me about the setup down at the Gun Hill. Well, we had a smaller studio originally, and it had a few shortfalls. And when we, when we moved, I thought, I'm going to tick the box on all the things that are not quite right in other studios I've worked in. So. Um, our original studio only had one uh, turntable. We uniquely got two turntables, one in a white Infinity Cove and then a, a separate black stage so you can shoot on white or black. Also got green screen that comes down the back. We have 24,000 watts of tungsten downlight, all motorized on a, with a floating ceiling beneath it uh, and all DMX controlled so I can actually make our entire lighting rig change for when we're doing a music video. I can make the lights match what's happening in the video each time the playback happens. We shoot a lot of motor stuff in the studio, hence the, the turntable, so we can do 360s of your personal Ferrari and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, won, I've got two, don't worry. Uh, you, but you've got, you got a lucky bit of history. You mentioned music. You've got a bit yeah. of history in there before you got into video production. Yes, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I've always been, I've always thought the best things are stuff that sound and picture are given equal importance on. Uh, I've, I've been a photographer since I was a kid, had my own dark room and that, but I, my career is in music. I've been a trumpet player for 30 years, played with a lot of major artists, but I also mixed a show called Live from Abbey Road, where, which we uh, shot Series 2 entirely on Vericam. Uh, and that was a show that was sort of uh, mixed like an album and filmed like a movie, and kind of changed the way uh, uh, music videos and TV has been shot ever since, which I'm quite proud of. Sure. And, and for the last six months you've been using Evo One, yeah. what was the rationale be before, be about choosing that one? Well, funny enough, it wasn't the first camera I was looking at. I, I love working on the Vericam, but I needed something with a smaller footprint. So initially I was looking at a Canon C200, because that's the kind of footprint I had. And a friend of mine at CVP, Yev, said I should wait and try this out. And when I did, there was kind of no going back, especially when it matched so perfectly with the Vericam. Being able to Use, have that sort of sensibility and this sort of size. And one of the key reasons I needed the size is because we get a lot of unique opportunities, both in the music industry and the motor industry. We shoot at Silverstone, Goodwood, Brands Hatch, but often in the 11th hour we get an interview or, some, or a chance to jump in a car and go around a circuit. We needed something small I can grab. And, and this camera breaks down to an even smaller footprint if you want it to. So I can sit next to uh, a racing driver at 140 miles an hour Hold it, holding the Eva. You know. Throwing anything you like, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, any tips and tricks for people watching this one uh, about, about the Eva one? Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few. I mean, one of the key things I would say is I would shoot V-Log to get the, the, the wider dynamic range and then use LUTs afterwards if you need to, or just grey. Don't think that you have to instantly go to the, uh, the standard 309. There's a lot you can do with that wider codec that, that by doing that journey, you sometimes take away some of that. Uh, what I love is there are so many keys on this thing and when I first got it I went to, to assign various um, uh, buttons but actually there's virtually a button for everything you need which so my default now is to just set it back to its defaults and only change a couple of things. One of the things I like to do is if I'm shooting, um, shooting from the hip in the field and I know I've, I've got to shoot at say, say that my delivery is 1080, I shoot at 2K which gives me a, an ability to crop in a little if I need to, but it also gives me the ability to jump to a slow-mo. Yeah. And if you assign the user assign button on this, you assign that to frame rate, you can on one button change between 100 frames and 25 frames. If you then have the iris, have an auto iris lens set right, and that on auto iris, both will change at the same time. So you can pop between slow-mo, because obviously if you're shooting 100 flame, frames, flames, frames, you have a quarter of the light. But if you have those both set like that, you can jump between 25 frames and 100 frames, providing you have enough light. But then comes to the other wonderful thing about this, is the dual sensor, because there's an 800 ISO sensor and a 2500 ISO sensor. You can shoot on the 2500 ISO sensor and come down from that, further reducing uh, any noise, although there's pretty much none of that anyway. But you can reduce that and still have a massive dynamic range when you want to shoot it slow-mo. 
So do, do you get what I mean by yeah, that? Yeah, sure, sure, still, sure, absolutely. Uh, and then if you wanted narrow de depth of field at the same time, you can, you can, these ND filters are in a perfect place for you to swap between auto. So one button press, you're between auto ISO back to manual, um, which, which is great. So you can almost use that button as a light reader. You know. sure. Sure. And, and you've recently joined the, the ambassador program for, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for Evo One. How do, you, how do you get involved in that? I have no idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> how do you get involved in that? Well, we're shooting a show, uh, and I wanted to shoot it all on one brand um, for a number of reasons. And I also like being, um, like being a flagship for breaking some of the rules about things don't have to cost £10 million. Pounds. You could shoot a Hollywood film on these. And I, and I, and I love sort of sending that message out there and, and not being a snob, you know, not being a snob with microphones when we're recording and all that. It's about content and ideas and lighting, you know, and getting all those other things, you know. The images first. I yes, think. the images first. And that's the great thing about this is where they've put most of the budget is on the image, sure. which is a great thing. And are you able to shed any light on upcoming projects that you're working on? Sure, sure. I mean, we're at the moment, and one of the key reasons we were looking at these cameras, we're shooting a unique new uh, motor show uh, with uh, cinema sensibility. So it, it's not going to be shot like your usual nut and bolt uh, fix it show. Uh, and, we, and that will entirely be unique footage in it. And it will all be shot on either Evas, 90% Evas, a little bit of Varicam, but it's also going to have breaking artists in it wrapped around the. So it's like motors and music meet together. Everything starts in the garage, whether you're a band or whether you're designing a car, everything starts in the garage, and that's the sensibility that's going to be behind driving music. Driving music. Okay, look forward to that. And if you would like to learn a little bit more, Rupert's going to be holding a session on Eva One at the Media Technology Day, which is on the 1st of November, and that's at the Ham Yard Hotel in London.